okay and we can always play with the scale and uh, we can immediately use the pattern that we had on our computer. So if, whenever you download uh, files like patterns or brushes, it's really simple to import them into Photoshop. So let's just do that again. I go back to Bridge and I double click on this vector pack. And if I go to my brushes, so I select the brush tool and I go to the brush panel, these brushes are automatically here. So whenever I select them, I can always place them on my uh, document I just create a new layer for it and then I just simply need to click to place this you can of course save your own brushes or custom shapes as well if you want to do something similar to this let me just go back to that previous example one of my recent artworks and here under the decoration group I have all these elements in vectors because I started to uh, create the vector shapes and from the vector shapes I used the Repose 3D option in Photoshop CS5 so that's how I designed this background but let me just select this vector mask and from the vector mask I'm going to delete one part which I don't need and I select some of these elements here and if I go to edit, I can save it as a custom shape. So if you have vector masks or paths selected, you can save them as custom shapes easily from the edit define custom shape option. Let me just call this shape one. I click on OK. Again, I go back to the other document, I'll delete this layer and I use the shape tools. And from the shape tools, I select custom shape. And from the library, we will automatically find the last shape that we just saved here in the library. And with that, I can easily draw that shape back into any of my documents now. The advantage of saving something as a custom shape is that it's completely resolution independent. So you can always resize it without losing quality because it's a vector shape. But if you save this as a brush, you will have other interesting options with it. Let me just delete the background layer and I just create a simple white uh, layer for the background and I change the color of this to black. I'm using, by the way, keyboard shortcuts to change the colors. Uh, Alt Backspace is the foreground color. Command Backspace is the background color. So whenever I click even on a custom shape, command backspace that will fill in with my background color which is white if I press alt backspace that will fill in the layer with black which is my foreground color so if I want to save this as a brush all the only thing I need to do is to select everything so I go to select all the whole image and then I go to edit define brush preset and I just simply call this sample brush for and I don't want to change the name I click on OK and now if I delete this from this image and I select my brush tool from the brushes I can select this previously saved brush okay I can make it smaller or larger and I can start drawing with it but obviously we have lots of other options if we start uh, defining a brush from the brushes panel so instead of using it like this I go to my brushes panel and first of all here I can go to brush tip shape and change the spacing setup so I can move them closer or further away from each other so if they are further away I can draw with them like this I draw a, pat a pattern like this easily but let me just leave the spacing somewhere here I turn on shape dynamics and I add a size jitter to my brush it's immediately a bit different but I also add an angle jitter to the brush and a scattering and I just increase the scatter amount and I also add a transfer option to it and an opacity jitter so now if I start drawing it will create a really interesting pattern from this brush so by using those options, the jitter options, you can quickly randomize how your brush will work. And it's up to you how you would like to use it. But only one thing that I would like to mention is that you should save 
your brush again with the settings if you want to use these settings next time okay so you should go to the brushes panel and click here on the bottom on new brush create new brush and it will save these settings if you want to use these next time so I will just save it and I also turn on the capture brush size in preset with brushes you should also understand that a brush tip shape and the brush preset is not the same thing so a brush preset will always use a brush tip shape but a brush preset also have all these options stored so if I just select uh, shapes here brush tip shapes they won't have that option that we just saved and we can see here in the background for that I need to click on brush presets here on the top which is a separate panel and from this panel I can select the one that I saved so here if I click on that it will have all the options that I saved from the drop down menu of the brush panel I can click on reset all logged settings which will simply just use the generic options with that brush tip shape that we use for the brush and if I want to go back again to the options I need to select it from the brush presets okay so that will set back all the options shape dynamic scattering transfer and everything if I want to use these options so these what I set for this brush but use it with a different brush tip shape I can always click on these little locks to lock these options and then I select another shape and I can use the same options with another shape the brush engine of Photoshop is really complicated and there are so many options but in this tutorial I just wanted to show you how to save and reuse your brushes out of all the presets I think the brush presets are the most complicated ones so just saving swatches for example or even custom shapes is much more straightforward than the brushes but there is one more thing that I would like to show and that is a tool preset which is very similar to a brush preset let me just close these panels and I go to another image and in CS5 we have also specific brushes called bristle brushes and let me just select one of these brushes with these brushes we can draw with real bristle brushes but we can even turn a photograph into a digital painting if we use also a CS5 new feature called the mixer brush tool so if with that I start drawing on this image and using also a bristle brush okay something like this I can start drawing with the colors or the details on the image let me just zoom a bit closer so this is what you can do with a bristle brush and the mixer brush tool and for example with the mixer brush tool I have some tool presets which I can select here from the top paint on photo dense paint on photo bristles soften skin and draw so four different setups and for example I select paint on photo dense it will change the brush and all these options here on the top so this is called a tool preset and now I can draw with another different option using the similar technique but it looks more like an oil painting now and obviously it's a different brush as well you can save tool presets with nearly all of the tools even for example with the crop tool we have tool presets so for example if I want to crop out from this image a 5 by 7 inch uh, 300 ppi resolution format I can always zoom out and create my crop okay let's say this is the area that I would like to crop out and if I press enter that will be used for the crop these tool presets can be also managed under the preset manager so if I come back to the preset manager here on the bottom you can find tools and with tools you see all the default options that you have in Photoshop and you can save as many as you want and it's the same way you can load and save them just like with any other presets in Photoshop
But apart from the preset manager, we can also change the keyboard shortcuts. If I go to edit keyboard shortcuts, here you can change any shortcuts for tools, panel menus or application menus. And if you change these options here, then you can save your keyboard shortcut set as a separate file. So I can click on save. And as you can see, the keyboard shortcut file is KYS. You can store this on your computer and copy paste it to another machine and then just simply double click on it will load all the keyboard shortcuts onto that machine. That is also really useful. And let me just save my keyboard shortcuts into the same folder. Preset manager. I save it there. Click on OK and I just show you this is how it looks like. So that's my keyboard shortcut file. It is always easier and more efficient to use Photoshop if you have your own presets, workspace, keyboard shortcuts saved. And I hope you found this tutorial useful. So spend some time, experiment, try to load, save, replace or append some of the presets that you have. And also browse the internet because you can find loads of free stuff for Photoshop and some of them are really good quality even though they are free so it's worth spending some time on this definitely thanks a lot for your attention and enjoy the presets